Hi, I'm Bob Reed from the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. And if you've decided to quit smoking, I want to congratulate you because there's nothing that you can do that will help improve your health more than to quit smoking. What I'm going to do over the next few minutes is take you through a five-step process that will help you get started and hopefully keep you quit as well. Let's get going. The number one thing that can be useful for people who are, who are thinking about quitting smoking is to actually set a quit date. We recommend that you set a quit date sometime within the next two to three weeks. Give yourself enough time to make some preparations, but not too much time that the motivation might dissipate over that period of time. One of the next most important things that you can do is to actually select a medication to help you with your quit smoking attempt. Currently in Canada, there are three types of medications that can be useful. The first form, which is called nicotine replacement therapy, is available over the counter. The second form of medication is called bupropion. This is a prescription medication which is available only through your doctor. The third form is called varenicline, also available only by prescription. You'll need to see your physician for that as well. The third thing that's really critically important is to actually prepare for your quit date. So there are three things that I want you to keep in mind. The first thing is that we should remove all smoking materials from our house, including all tobacco containing products, but also ashtrays, lighters, matches that might remind us about smoking. The second thing that's incredibly important is to actually inform people that we live with that we're going to be making a quit smoking attempt and to ask them not to smoke in front of us or to create a smoke free zone in the house where you can go that you will not be exposed to tobacco smoke. The third thing is to actually start to use the medication as it's been prescribed uh, that, we, that we talked about in the previous step and actually to start that before your quit date. One tip that pe some people find useful is to actually start to cut down on the amount of cigarettes that they're smoking prior to their quit date. Think about delaying your first cigarette of the day till later. As an example, if you typically smoke within the first few minutes of waking up in the morning, try to wait one hour before you have your first cigarette. Also try to uh, eliminate other cigarettes during the day. This will help you once you try to quit. After your quit date, many people do experience some symptoms of withdrawal from nicotine that can still be problematic for them. You need to have strategies in place that can help you deal with these problems as they occur. In our clinic, we like to talk about using delay, avoidance, and substitution as ways to manage these cravings and also to reduce their impact over time. When we say delay, what, what that means is that when we have a craving, typically that will only last five to 10 minutes. If we're able to delay our response by that amount of time, often we'll find that the craving has disappeared and we can get on with our day without reverting back to smoking. The second thing the, that, that can be useful is also using avoidance strategies. Typically, people associate smoking with many other activities in their life, and these can be problematic as we continue to do those after we quit and we're reminded about smoking. Most commonly, people experience cravings when they're confronted with situations that include alcohol consumption, or uh, when, we're, when we happen to have a low mood, or when we're around other smokers. In some cases, it might be necessary to avoid these situations in the first few weeks after we quit so that we're not tempted overly um, to go back to smoking. The third strategy that people find helpful is actually substitution. A couple of things that you can think about are to actually start an exercise program where you're getting more regular physical activity, including things like walking, cycling, or swimming, in order to reduce uh, some of the stress associated with quitting. Other people also find deep breathing exercises to be incredibly helpful in helping them relax. It's very important that you think about not smoking at all after your quit date. Even having one cigarette can put you back on the path to uh, smoking on a regular basis. However, if you do have a slip and go back to smoking one cigarette, don't feel that all your efforts have been wasted. Think about the situation that has caused you to go back to smoking and apply some of the strategies that we learned in the earlier segment of delay, avoidance, and substitution to develop a plan about how you're going to deal with that situation in the future without smoking. The last thing I wanted to point out is that there are many resources in the community that can help you with your quit smoking attempt. You're not alone. Your family doctor, the public health department, 
the Quit Smoking Program at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, as well as the Smoker Helpline, which is available provincially, are all useful resources that can help you in your time when you're trying to quit smoking. These programs often offer support for up to six months after your quit attempt uh, so that you can stay smoke free for the long term. Good luck with your quit smoking attempt. Again, there's nothing that's more important for your health than to quit smoking. Please contact us if you need further information.